Hi, my name is Jim Cummins. I'm a professor emeritus at the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education of the University of Toronto in Canada. When we look at uh, who we are, how we interact in our everyday lives, it's very clear that language forms an essential component of everything about us. Uh, we speak particular languages. Uh, some of us speak uh, more than one language. When we look at children uh, growing up, their identities are being formed. They're being formed by the interactions that they experience with their parents, with siblings, with other children, with their interactions in a preschool environment. And what they develop in terms of their identities depends on the messages they receive about what's accepted and what's not accepted. And unfortunately, historically and, and uh, currently, uh, in a lot of preschool and school contexts, uh, children's languages have not been accepted. The message that children have got is that they should leave their language at the schoolhouse door. And that if they want to be accepted in the, in the preschool or the school or the wider society, uh, there's only the major societal language that's legitimate or valid. And this is rejecting a significant part of the student's identity or the child's identity. And what we know from research is that children will do much better academically and have a more integrated sense of self uh, when they maintain their home language as they're acquiring the, uh, the school language. And so the goal should be multilingualism for students. The most obvious challenge is uh, one of communication. If, if a student comes to school as a, as a newcomer and uh, knowing very little or none of the school language, obviously there's a communication gap. Uh, but what we know is that uh, teachers can bridge that gap uh, by uh, using all kinds of cues to the meaning. Uh, the term that, that researchers use to talk about this is scaffolding. And if we think about scaffolding that goes up outside a house or a building that uh, uh, workers are working on, what that does is it allows those workers to get to places that they couldn't have gotten without the scaffolding. And so scaffolding in the instructional sense means providing the supports for students to acquire the school language and to develop literacy in that language. And this will involve things like um, using visuals uh, such as photographs, uh, images, uh, graphics, etc., diagrams to help get the meaning across. It'll also involve things like demonstrations where in the concrete situation we can show children what, what's required. When we look at uh, newcomer students uh, arriving in schools and unfortunately uh, today we're in a situation where there are large numbers of Ukrainian children uh, entering schools across Europe and in countries like Canada and the United States um, as a result of the, the war in Ukraine. And the, many of these students have experienced traumatic um, uh, ex experiences. Uh, their fathers are often still in Ukraine. So there's a need for incredible sensitivity to the situation of these students. And this is something that obviously will be a concern to individual teachers. But what we know works much better than just individual teachers doing their own thing is if the entire school uh, comes together and talks about what kinds of school-wide processes uh, we should be engaging in uh, to make the school a welcoming place, a safe place for newcomer students. How can we involve parents in their children's education? How can we explain to parents what schooling is like in Belgium, in Ireland, in Canada or elsewhere? How can we uh, provide resources for uh, parents to help their children learn the school language? How can we communicate to students that their home language is valuable and something, is something to be maintained? This requires discussion at the school level and it requires leadership uh, from school principals, vice principals, to make this happen. And involving children themselves, the children who are in the school already, in terms of explaining to them that newcomer children are, are coming in, they're coming from a place called the Ukraine. We can look it up on the map, we can see what's happening uh, there. Uh, and that we want to provide a welcoming environment and what kinds of things can they come up with that might help newcomer students to, to settle in, to feel welcomed and to start learning uh, and continue their education.